Evie and I are going to talk to you this time about your left hand. And uh, just before we do that, like we'll always do, let's review the things we talked about in the previous two videos. So remember your sitting position. You're sitting up at the front of your chair. Your left foot is on a footstool. The guitar is on your left leg. The guitar neck uh, is going up at a 45 degree angle. And you've got a couple of additional ways to measure that. The tuning peg is eye level. It's leaning against your chest here. It's touching your right leg and your right forearm is on the top of the guitar, measured by tracing the line of that bridge up to the top of the guitar. And then you rest your thumb on the low E string or sixth string, you put your middle finger on the second string or the B string, you look for that really nice straight line moving through your index finger and your hand to your wrist, and of course the space under your wrist so that your thumb remains flexible when we need to use it to play. And then your right hand is set up and then you're getting quite used to this. You've got your sitting position, your right hand is locked into place. We're going to focus on your left hand. And your left hand is so dependent on this sitting position being the way it is with the guitar neck on the left side of your body. Just as an example, again, you saw me sit like this earlier. If the guitar is on the right side of my body, my left hand has to cross the center of my body in order to play this part of the neck. And you can probably imagine that it interferes with my freedom of motion as I get up into this area of the frets. Not a good idea. So once the guitar neck is on the left side of my body, then I have free range of motion all the way up and down the neck. I can reach every string and every fret equally well. So let's talk about three or four vocabulary words that we really need to be able to communicate well. The first, and this is probably obvious to all of you, is that these metal lines that intersect the neck of the guitar are frets. Most classical guitars have 19 frets. We're gonna concern ourselves with the first four frets in the early part of Lead Guitar Book One. And right now we're gonna focus on the third fret. So as we set up the left hand, we're also going to talk quite a bit about the finger numbers of the left hand. We number the left hand fingers as one, two, three, and four. Easy to remember. For now, we're focusing on your third finger, and it's going to play the third fret of the second string or the B string, the same string you've been playing all along with your right hand. Another bit that you need to know the thumb has to be in place. The thumb is kind of the, the fulcrum point around which everything on your left hand operates. So your thumb needs to be flat behind the neck of the guitar, pointed up at the sky, parallel to the frets, and relaxed. Your thumb should be approximately behind the second fret of the guitar or approximately in the center of your left hand. Your wrist should be behind the neck. You never want to have your wrist out in front of the guitar neck. That creates a lot of tension and you never want your fingers, your tendons and your muscles moving at an angle through your hand. Straight lines are always better. So I want you to take the tip of your third finger and press down the second string right next to the third fret. And you can see that I'm pressing down not here in the middle of the two frets, definitely not over here, but right next to the third fret. Let's practice pressing down your third finger on the third fret of the second string, the B string, and letting go. I want you to press down and hold that note and let go. Press down. And when you press down, you're creating a D note. That's a D note and let go. And that's the B note that you've been used to playing. We're only moving the left hand. We're only thinking about the left hand. And when we've done this really well several times and you're comfortable doing it well, then we're going to add the right hand. We're going to play rest strokes, of course, with the right hand. And we're going to play each of these left hand notes two times. We're going to play two D notes. Then we're going to lift your left hand finger just a little bit off the string and play two B notes. And the reason we play each note twice is so that we can reinforce the warm-up we were just doing with your right hand by itself in, in our second video. So each note gets a middle finger and an index finger from your right hand, and then you lift and change, middle finger, index finger. So that idea of alternating in your right hand is being reinforced as we practice your left hand now. Evie, let's hear you do it. 
very good. You've got all the basic things about your left hand already in place. One of the things that you and I have talked about before is that thumb has to be flat on the back of the neck, right? And that's a very common thing not to do. You can probably feel that it made your thumb a little bit more relaxed. And maybe you notice that now more of your left hand fingers are in front of the neck of the guitar, and that's important too. So you've got a beautiful position there. Your third finger is right up against the fret, right where you want it. If it's here, right up against the fret, the tone is better. There are no buzzes and the pitch is more accurate as well. So let's see you press down right there, press down and hold it and let go. Very good, press down and hold it and let go. And keep doing that for a second. Other things I like are your knuckles are parallel to the bottom of the neck and you've got a nice space on both sides of your hand, a nice space between the bottom of the neck and your hand. Great. And our students watching this for the first time will need a lot more practice doing just that. But you're already ready to do two D's and two B's. Let me hear you do that. Beautiful, Evie. That's exactly how you do it.